It's Wednesday, it's the premiere of City of Bones and I'm going, I'm finally going with my friends. I thought I was going to go alone, but some of my other friends wanted to go, so I guess I'm going. I'm all decked out. I'm all decked out in my shadow hunter black and I'm ready to go, so I will come back to you guys, I don't know, after the movie to just tell you if I liked it. So, see ya. Hey guys, I am back from the City of Bones movie premiere. I'm kind of surprised there wasn't as much people as I thought there would be considering the fandom is pretty huge. So, I'm lucky, I guess. I got first dibs on seats and we got really good seats. In an IMAX movie theater, that doesn't happen often. So, we were sitting in the middle. Right, smack dab in the middle. Not in the front, not in the back, just in the middle. We had the whole freaking screen, and there were hardly any people at the 4 o'clock showing. I'm sure there was more people at like 8 o'clock, but we went 4 o'clock because we wanted to get home early, because the movie theater is like an hour away, the one with the IMAX. We went to the movie theater, and we went to see City of Bones. Since there wasn't that many people at the movie theater, I guess I was the only fangirl who really went all out and all dressed up and stuff. I wore a jacket I got don't know when. I wore a shirt that I bought Boxing Day. Don't know where, but I got it for under three bucks. And then I also wore um, my skirt I bought at Forever 21. So it's not a dress, but I am not going to shell out $40, $50 for the replica of Clary's dress at Hot Topic. Uh, I'd rather just spend it on my movie ticket. See, this is fangirl problems. We want to buy everything, but we can't. Yeah. Anyway, to the review. I've never reviewed a movie before. Big alert! Spoilers up ahead! If you have not seen City of Bones, the movie, or read the books, or both, then I suggest you do that right now because I am going to spoil the movie for you. I'm just going to blab on of what I thought of my movie experience during City of Bones and what I thought about the movie. So. If you haven't, click out, because I don't want to ruin it for you. The story for the movie, it was pretty accurate to the books. You'd know what things were changed if you've read the book, but if you haven't, you'd still be able to follow along pretty good. I think they changed some things in the movie to make it more easy to catch up to for the non-readers out there. But for the readers like me, I'm picky about details, but the overall experience of the movie, I think it was really good for readers and non-readers alike. It probably did draw in some more fans due to the movie who might be able to read the books because they've seen the movie and it was it was really good. It can stand on its own without the book, but I highly suggest you read the book because then you're going to be kind of lost. It's like, why is Valentine doing that? No, he doesn't have those goals. Don't reveal them in the first move. But in the city, doesn't have a portal. There's only two. Uh... You know, those are the little things. Things that don't necessarily matter, I guess. I suppose if you included every single detail in the book, the movie would have been really long, like super long. The acting in the movie, I think it was pretty decent. Lily Collins definitely toughened up Clary's character. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. In the movie, she was portrayed more as a leader of a, a fighter, whereas in the book, she kind of relied on Jason, the rest of the Shadowhunters, to do everything for her. In the movie, she's like drawing this ruin that she's never seen before, that no one's ever seen before, and stopping all the demons in their tracks. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, since that wasn't in the book, but okay, sure. As long as there's a second movie to try to explain everything that they did in the first movie, I think I'd be happy. I know that if they included Simon as a rat, it would have looked cheesy and amateur, but I really wanted to see Simon as a rat. And the vampires wanted the Mortal Cup? Really? Really? I guess I had to like squish all the conflict into one big fight to cut down the time, but really? Fights at the Institute? Really? Why not Blackwell Island? I was like almost pulling my hair out at that point when <laughs> Valentine came through the portal at the Institute. Yeah, I know, he comes through something at the Institute. I can't remember, but he comes to the Institute and Hodge gives him the cup. Oh, okay. But the fight isn't supposed to take place at the Institute and I'm just kind of let down. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Don't think I hate it. 
I like the movie, but the movie is something on its own. You can read the book, read the movie, and be able to not compare the two. They are different entities to me, and both I really like, by the way. I love it. Not as much as my favorite candy but As for Jace, Jamie Campbell Bowers Jace, as the movie progressed, like at first I was like, mm -hmm. And then, as the movie got more into the plot, I was like, uh, Yeah, he, he, he looks, he has, he has, um, yeah, he, 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 he can act like Jace. Especially those little quips and the sarcastic remarks he makes. Those are really Jace-tastic. That's a word. He really brings out Jace's character. If you have any doubts about Jamie being Jace, you should watch the movie. They, it would just completely erase your doubts. He fits the character. As for Isabel and Alec, I think they pulled their characters off pretty well too. I didn't expect to have a problem with Magnus, but I did. He fits the character's appearance perfectly, but something about his voice and his acting makes me kind of cringe. Did you guys cringe? I cringed. Maybe it was the accent, but I was expecting more of an exotic accent. Maybe a British? Because I've read The Infernal Devices. They were really good and Magnus was there a lot so I don't know maybe I was expecting a little bit of that infernal device kind of accent but I guess he modernized himself and fit in with American culture and lost his accent or something I wanted to see church I want to see church the cat but no cats no rats and no vampire bikes either I didn't really cry at any point of this book. I know. I might be cold-blooded or something. I didn't really cry during this book. There was no tear-jerking moments. Thus, I wasn't really tearful at the movie, but Lily Collins, she could bring that emotion. She can make you feel a twinge of- Oh my gosh, really? I feel bad for you, girl. She can really bring that emotion out of you. I was kind of surprised. I didn't expect that level of acting from her. Although, some, uh, some parts were a bit cliche. I think she did a good job and the whole movie kind of made you feel included with the fandom. Even though if you've never read the books and you were just going with your friends, you'd be able to catch up with the plot quickly. What did I think of the ending? Disappointed. 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 I know. Hate me. Hate me all you want. But I just didn't like the ending. Valentine is supposed to run away wherever he is with the mortal cup. Clary, she's not supposed to be that smart or quick-witted, I guess. Sorry if I'm putting down her character, but I don't think she would have thought of putting the mortal cup back in the tarot card and hiding it from Valentine. I, I don't think that would have happened. There are just so many little details. It's like, what? A large diamond in front of Luke's eyes? I thought he had to be behind that door, you know? What? Han just didn't get his curse lifted and make a run for it, and instead he helped Isabel and Simon defeat those demons upstairs. Oh my gosh, really? Other than those little tiny nitpicky details I'm always fussing about, I think the movie was really good. You, sh you guys should totally check it out. I really want to see a sequel made to this City of Ashes, I'm pretty sure. And I want to see how they can explain everything that they did differently in the movie for the first book. And the action scenes! Oh my god! There was so much action, I didn't expect it because in the book there's action, right? There's action, but there there is an action every turn of the page. There are moments of emotion and stuff, but this movie I felt like there was more action than emotion. There was a lot of action. And then at the end, oh my gosh, at the end, it's just full out action blown. There's action everywhere. There are werewolves fighting, there are freaking demons and stuff trying to fight them. And the whole sequence with Valentine and Jace fighting each other with swords, my gosh, wow. I wonder if they used a stunt double for that, because <laughs> that, that was pretty intense. One other thing that I really didn't expect, the CGI. This CGI was really good. The demons, they were amazing. They scared me. I almost peed in my pants, partly because I drank too much, but I was really scared. I was clutching my seat in dear fright of myself. In that moment when Dorothea became a demon, that whole sequence kind of confused me. When Simon came in, yeah, he's not driving them to 
Clary's place. He instead gets texted by Eric. Eric messages Simon that he's seen Clary heading to her house. And what does Simon do? Obviously he follows her! Finds her in trouble, locked in, which doesn't make sense. And Dorothea has the cup, which also doesn't make sense. And she's walking in the freaking sunlight, which absolutely boggles my mind. In the book, Simon uses Alex bow and arrow to shoot the skylight and the sunlight practically immobilized and perished but not really um the demon abaddon who destroyed dorothea's body in the movie she looks like dorothea except with little mutant features i was frustrated that, at that scene i know the movie had to take liberties but I really wish they did something about the whole demon sunlight thing. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you know how frustrated I felt at that particular moment? <sighs> I know, I seem like I'm complaining a lot. Don't hate me. I did enjoy the movie. I did. I really enjoyed the movie. But that one scene, that garden house, greenhouse scene, the one where they share their kiss, yeah. I thought it followed the books nicely, but the sprinklers, did they really have to come on? Did they have to make it all notebookish? Like, there was kissing in the rain, technically not rain, but sprinkler rain, really? That just kind of made it more cliche for me. Like, they could have done without it, I feel. What did you guys think of the movie? I'm really interested in if any of you guys watched it yet. Did you guys go to the premiere? Did you see anybody dressed up? I only saw like a couple. I felt, I felt special. Make sure to subscribe, I don't know where the button is. Comment your opinions about this movie. What did you think? Did you fuss over the details as much as I did? And go see it, if you haven't. And if you have, go see it again. I keep getting interrupted.